you, you know, all of a sudden this is an entirely your show, 100% like marketing and being on camera and switching scenes and setting up graphics and the whole works is, is yep. on you, right? This is literally a business. Yeah. It's, I, that's um, my new thing is this is a job. Like you said, broadcasting, audio engineering, promoting, it's everything all on one guy. Yep. hundred yep, percent. So I was like, Oh, well we, we definitely could try that. And then I kept bringing up these, these butts like, um, you know, like, I, I can't do it because of a, a former relationship I had where um, everything I tried to do was kind of put down or, you know, I, I didn't have that um, permission, for, for lack of yeah. a better word. Did right, you you kept putting up barriers for yourself in a way. Yep. Yeah. And then one of my friends took me aside and he says, just fucking do it, man. Like, like there's nothing stopping you sort of read that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's actually a website that anybody can use called Chit Chat. Um, it strips out like a bunch of garbage, like emotes are gone. Yep. Um, anything kind of spam related links are gone. It's literally just communi communicative text Yeah. Um, that's kept behind. Really good tool, by the way. And people with ADHD yeah. and Asperger's and like... Yeah, that was Jellybean. Jellybean, what's up? Shouts out Jellybean. <laughs> oh, right on. <laughs> yeah, that was Jellybean. <laughs> and... I, I think it finally clicked, right? Yeah. And I've only been on TikTok for, I, I don't even know, a couple of months, mm -hmm. whatever. And I, I finally got it and I understood. And that was not my intention at all. Um, I, I love Neo Firefly, um, but I, I hate the fact that I hurt his feelings, potentially. Yeah. Um, with my response. That's the thing with, with TikTok. Stitches are always really great. You have to be careful what you clip. And helps if people know the context by clicking on the original that's video as well the kicker so my original pop to attack a company that you use constantly a platform that you use constantly that's bizarre right the funny thing is if twitch folded tomorrow yeah we'd all be left on the streets yeah literally um a lot of people put a lot of faith into twitch they think that you know, even as a partner, while I do have an extra avenue of support if I need it, yeah, I'm, I I don't mean anything to Twitch's bottom line. Like, <laughs> you know, absolutely it, not. It, I would I would be forced to move elsewhere, as would everybody else. That's that's part of you know that's that's why people say diversify your income from the get. It's because you could lose it in an instance, and I don't think. You know, I, I think people don't don't realize that. You know, they think that oh well, I'm I'm on Twitch. I've signed my my contract, my partnership, whatever, and they think that uh, that's it. That they'll look after them, no rain, hail, or shine. No, yeah, no, you're the, you're the first to leave. Like <laughs> when I well, was when I raided it. by kind of a, a Twitch OG, Lethal Frag. I don't know if you've heard of him or not. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Um, he does raids a little bit differently, okay? So he reached out to me personally. Well, well, one, I saw the follow during one of my streams, and I'm like, did I read that right? <laughs> Turns out that he's been watching me for ages. Oh, my God. So, again, always be talking. Always Ooh. be talking. You never know who's watching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I always assume everyone's in my chat. All of all, whatever amount of followers I have, I always just assume they're there. Yeah. But go on. I'm sorry. He reached out to me and he said, hey, dude, I'd, I'd like to drop you a raid. Would that be OK? And I was like, yeah. And he contacted me ahead of time on the day just yeah. to confirm that one, I was streaming. He asked me what game I was playing. And then he ended his stream on the same game. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah who yeah. does that? This is unheard That's of. Straight so, away, right? Oh, my God. If you want to talk about the like most professional way to raid, I wish everybody fucking did that. I mean, it's yes and no. Think about that on a daily daily basis. Right? Yeah, yeah, it would be almost impossible. Yeah, but but he he kind of I don't know. He believed in my content. He liked me as a person, I guess. Yeah. And um, so that jumped because of the the warm handoff that he 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 did there. That the atmosphere he created when he brought his channel over to mine. It was different than any other raid that I've ever had and probably ever will have. Um, so I maintained momentum and kept streaming and built on that. 
and stuck to my core values. And yeah, within, I'd say three months from that moment, I, I got that partnership application. Damn. So. Do you, now you only had to do it once? Cause I know a bunch of people do it two, three, five times. First time. Yeah. So this is another thing. People were a little bit sour, um, on that as well. And they were like, oh, like it's, it's, you know, I, I still haven't gotten partner. And, and it's like, those numbers are literally the entry point. If you don't have more than that. Yep. And you can't speak to that when, when prompted, there was a TikTok, and I'm, I'm so pissed off at myself, uh, for, I have a habit of seeing something really cool. And if I don't screenshot it, if I don't like it, if I don't favorite it, I can't go back and find it ever. Like TikTok is a minefield, dude. Like it's oh, yeah. impossible. Yeah. I, there was one I girl so came many. out. Yeah. There was one girl came out and she said, you know what? It doesn't matter what you write in that little box at the bottom. All you've got to do is link your, your TikTok and your Twitch. And I was so fucking pissed at that. I saw that, that one. I was like, I was like, that is completely wrong. Like, yes, you can get fast tracked to partner if you have a following on other channels, right? Yeah. yeah, on, yeah. Other, on other platforms. Um, but no, you've got to speak to it. You've got to know, you've got a list. You should have seen my letter and I'd be happy to send you a copy one day. It was, um, this is who I am. This is how I'm doing. This is what I've done for the community. This is what I've done, you know, with, within my own community for growth. This is what my values are. This is where I see myself heading. This is why partner is really important to me. My letter was a novel almost. Yeah, I feel sorry for the the partner manager on the other end who had to read that. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen a, bu a couple friends have sent me theirs, and they they write a whole thing. They they want to get partner, I don't know, get partner that bad, but they they put their heart and soul into that essay, if you will. That yeah. So and and that's the thing. That's where you do have a decent product. Right, the the show that you're producing is amazing. Yeah, and people get really, really dejected when that rejection letter comes through. Yep, because they think it's a rejection letter. They're like, I've hit my 75. Um, I've written this amazing letter, which is all true, and I'll stand by it until the day I die. Yeah, something's not there, right? So it's it's not an automatic get, and I think that's where a lot of people think that and <laughs> Twitch kind of did this to themselves because of the affiliate program. And the way they've gamified the site. Yep. Yeah. Right. The, the numbers that you achieve uh, or build towards, it's it's like you've got all these achievements to get and you get them. And it's like, all right. Yeah. Like we've, we've now rated 10 people or whatever. The, you know, there's, there's hundreds of them. Yeah. They've set their, themselves up. The path to partner is a different situation, I think. And um, people still think of it the same way. If you believe in your product, partnership doesn't matter. The only caveat to that, I would say, would be guaranteed transcoding. That's a big one for me. That that was one of the reasons why I wanted to become a partner. Like yeah. Nothing else. Nothing else changed other than I can give my bot a free tier three sub. I can give my wife a lifetime tier three sub. It's like, oh, I didn't even know that. Not many people do. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, we got the inside scoop. Um, like it, there's not a lot that changes, right? Yeah. Um, the amount of money that I earned, the, the amount I earned from, yeah, none of that, none of that really changes much at all. Yeah. I know there's like a, a disclosure or whatever. You can't fully say what you make and whatnot, but I don't, that, I've been asked since I dropped affiliate, will, if you ever get to partner numbers, will you apply for partner? And I if I make it to partner numbers while not being affiliate, fuck no. What like I'll I, maybe not fuck no, but if I'm building something that doesn't require something else, why would I bring that into the equation? You know? Yeah. Like I don't want to devalue. I never want to devalue affiliate or partner for people because those are goals that people set. But it's I don't think you need it. I'm in that I'm in that party of people don't need it. Also, I think There's, I've I've seen your your point of view there, and I don't disagree. Yeah. Um, I've seen. Devin Nash's huge push. Yep. And a lot of people took that, I think, Whoa. a little too seriously. Yeah. Because Devin Nash is, a, is an industry insider. He knows what he's talking about. Yep. Um, I mean, shit, he's making the move to YouTube. So. Yeah. 
Um, it's funny. Sleepwalker just said people just want that nice purple tick. One of the first <laughs> things I did was turn that off on the global. Oh, really? Um, you know, you know, on other people's channels. Oh, shit. Um, and it's just that I just don't want to. I don't feel like I need to show off my product. My product speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, Same. In their personality, the way that changes, because as. Uh, Sleepwalker just said, viewers will know when you're not enjoying yourself. It, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be written on your face. They can hear it. They can sense it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's nothing worse. Than, and, and I've, I've streamed a couple of times when I shouldn't have, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm either close to partner or whatever, or, or trying to reach some goal, maintain momentum, whatever you want to yep. call it. And I push myself through and I, fucking regret it every single time um after stream it's like i shouldn't have streamed tonight it was it was a bad stream i didn't feel myself i felt fake hmm. and that's the last thing i ever want to become because like yeah. what you see on stream with me is what you get in real life uh but hey it's one of those things um, i feel that canceling a stream i've thought about it for a couple and it's because i i do so much. I work the full time job. I want to finish my edits because I know my content technically lives off of Twitch, like podcast. Who's uh, garring an audience for a podcast from the ground up is almost impossible. I'm doing a semi, semi, super decent job at it, but my stuff lives through edits. And mm -hmm. I'll just wait to the last second and say, should I go live? Do I really need more content to worry about? And there's definitely been times where. I'm just tired of shit. I just, I hope, hey guys in the chat, does it seem like I, I'm not on? I feel like I do a decent job at kind of always being me. But yeah, I've I've wanted to cancel a couple of streams that maybe I should have. But you don't, I have that mindset. Like you you can't, you have to, every stream, you're on a schedule, consistency, that grind. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have, I, that's another thing. I don't have a schedule either. Drama, like I know we talked, actually, you guys, I'm getting to the point now where people are DMing me about TikTok drama. I, I thought you DM'd me about corporate Brit, right? I did. You did? I did this morning, in At fact, because everybody was like, oh, I'm not going to talk about it like right now. I was like, corporate Brit, how could you do this to me? <laughs> you're, you're the guy. You're the one. <laughs> Dude, he's going out and, and making videos for all the people doing the Rave for Raid stuff. And I had six people in my DMs this morning saying, who's corporate Brit talking about? Corporate Brit is talking about uh, Teeny, I think is her name. And she's also been making it her job on, which here's the thing. I know what my content on TikTok now is for the most part. It's these chats. That's what it's all about. I've decided no more real shit talking for the most part unless I really see something I don't like. But Teeny's going out and saying your raid for raid culture, your support for sport, follow for follow nonsense is my job on TikTok. And she found one dude who did the like, I'll never see you again because you don't acknowledge my raid. Blah, blah, blah. Apparently he sent people to attack her. And it's crazy, first of all, because, hey – aren't we adults? Like this is, a, <laughs> <laughs> this is a, if you want a, this to be a job and that's what corporate Brit said, he's like, if you want to truly have this be a job, it shouldn't be about, you should be building a brand. You should be putting out real content. You shouldn't be building these weird, I always say cult, but it's kind of culty behavior with these communities, you know? I, um, there's, there's one person that, is, is really getting under my skin. Uh, has streaming changed you in the real world? Like, has it affected your, besides obviously being a huge part, do you feel you act any differently because of streaming? Like, I'm more outgoing now because of streaming. Yes, yes. In a positive way, I would say too. Uh, ever since starting streaming, I have more confidence when I'm talking. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I feel more present in conversations. I feel like, I matter. Um, a lot of these things, it's it's so weird. I went through an, a relationship that was abusive and I was in that relationship for six years and it definitely had a negative impact on me. Like I moved to Los Angeles to become an actor yeah. originally. Uh, that hadn't happened for me yet. Now it's still not off the table, but it's it's no longer, you know, one of those things that I regret or will regret not doing it's it's something that's a possibility for me yeah whether you know whatever right but the fact that i have an outlet i have that creative release i have work to fill my free time the one thing i need to do now is start pulling back consuming content 
in my free free time and learn how to create better content but do it on a level where i'm comfortable with that learning aspect and remove some of the guilt there as well i feel I'm, that i'm caught between so many different things and my full-time job it definitely pays the bills it it it's what's been it, it's it's the reason I've been able to stream as well. Yeah. Right. Like have access to, you know, the, the TikTok that goes around now, it's like, I have access to adult money now. So <laughs> I do ridiculous things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like it is that. And, uh, so yeah, I'm still, I'm still finding my place. I'm, I haven't got this formula worked out yet. Uh, and every journey is different, but I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable right now. Anyway, anyway, so you got into acting. Um, I walked out of Spider-Man, the first Tobey Maguire movie. Okay. And I had I had a feeling during that one moment. I was like, I, I felt like electric. Wow. I okay. walked out of that uh, that cinema with I was I was actually moved by a comic book character on screen to the point where I felt like I was Spider-Man or it could be Spider-Man. And Damn. it was that one moment when I thought that um I would, I would love to, you know, instill that feeling in somebody else one day. Um, so I went to Australia's most prestigious acting school for a couple of years and moved to the UK. And I did a few very small things, like small, you know, friends projects and and... I did a commercial and I did like a couple, couple of things, but nothing really stand out. Right. Like I never really got my break. Yeah. Uh, I produced my own short film. Um, that was an amazing experience. I got together a group of people and, uh, on a, on a shoestring budget, we pulled this thing together and, and what we got as a result of that, um, was such a polished product. We went to the Cannes film film festival, um, oh. We didn't, you know, we weren't featured or anything, but we self-submitted. So yeah. we went there just for the experience. Yeah. And that was amazing. Uh, I moved to the United States, moved to Los Angeles. The And then that brings in that whole, you know, relationship that I was in that. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't crush my dreams, but it definitely set me back a rung or two uh, on, on, my, on my passion path. So. Hmm. Do you think we'll get... Cosplay, I'll get to your question in a hot second. Do you think streaming is sort of fulfilling that perform for you to perform? Streaming has been able to fill that in some way? Because that's I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um I I can even see myself potentially parlaying streaming into an acting career. It's an odd way of going about things, but I can see that that you know that that roadmap is definitely laid out in front of me. I do 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 it do right. it <laughs> i mean there's nothing you know i love that i fucking love that shit that you you make it the, i was talking with neo firefly last night about this is turning your stream into an like how are you investing in your future with your stream and it's shit like that how can i make something that was a passion that led me to streaming in a sort of way and then turn it back into that passion like harris heller is back into music he made stream beats he was always a music guy and he used streaming to bring it all back into fucking stream beats and that is so hard to do yeah. but it's it's shit like that that is he that, he hit that at the perfect time it's almost like he saw it coming he did way. he says he did yeah because he was in that music um, mind, he came from music, yeah. and he saw that in streaming. And he said, "I know exactly what I have to do." Yeah, keep my my live viewers active. I don't see who's in stream, but I do see how many people are in stream. Yeah, um, and that gives me real time feedback on. Oh, you you watch your viewer count? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't do it. Like right now, as far as I'm concerned, all thousand. I have a thousand viewers. I can't do it, dude. You are way off. It's at least three times that. <laughs> Fuck it, I made it. No, I'm sure. I, um, I always assume I have like 10. But as long as people are chatting or having a good time or I, the conversation's good. But anyway, you watch your followers and, or not your followers, your viewership, I'm sorry. Right, well, that, that gives me real-time feedback on mm. what I'm doing. Okay. If I change games, I see the drop. And I'm, I'm fortunate in that I, I don't really... The number, the, the, the quantity doesn't bother me. Yes, it's nice to see that number grow, 
when I'm doing things right. Um, but I need to know when I'm doing things wrong as well, so I can course correct if need be. Um, Makes sense. Switching games is is kind of an anomaly because that's that's gonna have an impact no matter what. There's nothing I can really do about that other than not change games, and I'm not gonna do that. You know. Sorry, I just all. Do I have a whole day in the life? Sorry, let me. Day in the life. Snakes. Okay. <laughs> Underline that one. No, I haven't. I haven't done one. Um, I did have. Like, if I'm just sitting in the chat, I don't really want to have my name on screen. That's weird, right? That gives me away. It sort of points me out. I, I might get rid of follower alerts. This is a pretty convincing art, especially for the fact that this show kind of begs to be watched or listened to. It's not not to take it away from the people who do take part, but the chat's there. I have the chat there for people who want to. Maybe I should take the chat away. Nah, I like you guys too much. Um... Oh, Jellybean says that you can only have chatters. If, okay, that's good. That's good. But so you took follower alert away. That's interesting. So during during the big raids that I've had, yeah, especially the ones that I was talking about before, there's no way I could keep up, right? That's true. I, I, I just have to apologize and run with it. Yep. Um, on my OBS alerts now, I've I don't have follower alerts visible. I have a second screen with like everything on it just so i can sort of filter through if need be yeah um but no that's i, I yeah I, I don't know i found that it's it's nice people people come to my stream because they want to they just want they either want to fall asleep they want to have a, a chill place to hang out in forget their worries for just a few hours and and just have someone not screaming at them that's that's <laughs> it that's one of the reasons why i don't often play I went to i went to twitchcon 2019 and it's I'm I was an affiliate at the time, okay. and I was just looking around, and everybody was everybody was this pers big personality, right? So you had people recording themselves and like being this this wild sort of presenter uh, type yeah. character, especially in that atmosphere. Um, like people had come up to me and say. Hey man, like how are you doing? I'm just like cool, like a networking opportunity, or even just to make a friend. Yeah. Um, and instead, they look at the badge that says affiliate, and they'd just be like, "All right, so I'm just gonna like go over here and have a conversation." And it was like, "Really? That, that is weird to me. That is that is super weird. There were there weren't people at that event because this is their one shot to make it, right? That's so fucking asinine. Let me let me tell you another story, right? I was at a, a movie premiere in LA and it was a small movie that was made in New Zealand and a friend of mine who was an actress in the film took me to that event and James Cameron just happened to We talked about it. What's your streamer tip? What would be your go-to <laughs> streamer tip? If someone said streaming, how do I do it? What do I do? So I'm, I'm just going to flip the, the very first piece of advice that I had on its head and yeah. say, be yourself. Oof. Like, I, that, that is so, it's so nebulous. It's so hollow when you think about it. But at the same time, people come to the game, people come to the stream maybe for the game that you're playing. Yep. But they want to stay because of who you are. Yes, yeah. If you're a hyper-realistic, this, this person that is sort of out there and, and, you know, bigger than life, it might be, I don't know, it's difficult to maintain. And when they see you as somebody else, you know, what, what, does, that, what does that get you? I, I, am, am I 100% the same on stream? I'm probably more awake. I'm more <laughs> present. You know, I'm, I'm very responsive. Yeah. I'm an introvert in real life, so it's difficult for me to sometimes do that. Yeah. But my attitudes, my my calm demeanor, everything else stays exactly the same. And that's I think that's you couldn't have a simpler answer to that question. Just be yourself. Hmm. I will I'm gonna play devil's eye. I'm glad that Twitch is hard to grow on. I like okay. I love the challenge of it. I love the fact that it's not Twitch's job to get me discovered. I love that I have to put in the work everywhere else because it means that I did just that. 
Everything I put, everything I've put into this so far, I feel fucking good about it. Like, and that's a hard place to get for a lot of people. Every single person who's in this chat, who's come through the chat, all the people I've met is because I've put the work in because Twitch won't do it. YouTube discoverability, you know, whatever. It's like, that's a whole other realm. But Twitch itself, I'm happy as a peach, whatever the expression is, that it's difficult to grow on it because then everybody would be doing it. Twitch is my stage and I'm just dancing, baby. Uh, it's an interesting perspective. We'll save that for round two, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I am in Follow that game. like for more. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, that's how I feel, you guys. I can understand wanting to be discovered and all that stuff, but if everybody had it easy, I don't know, then we'd all be doing it. And, and, and that's not a bad thing. If everybody could do it, blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of stuff that goes into it. But me, personally, that's how I see, I'm glad that it's difficult because that's my personality. It makes me feel that much better about when things do pop off. You creators always say, don't worry about the numbers when numbers really matter. I do not get this. Aguib? Well, that's the thing. I do worry about the numbers, and I'll I'll openly tell people that, um, yeah. because they they matter. Like I said, in order for me to go full time, I'm going to need to hit a specific mark, right? Like, I I do worry about the numbers, so I I don't know why that is the case. I think they might be being disingenuous. I think they might be putting forth an image of, um, you know, just hey. Like, it's, it's great to hang out with you, which is, you know, I love having you guys here. If you feel like donating, you'd be more than welcome, but it's not required. I even say that myself. Yeah. Because that's how I feel. I don't want to take people money away from people that need it more than I do, right? Um, that, tough question, man. That's false humility. It might be a mixture of, of both, though. It's, 